Hello, it's uh, a pleasure to be here with you in New York and to describe for you a project that our Institute Without Boundaries, uh, which is located in Toronto at the School of Design at George Brown, has undertaken this year with the city of Dublin. Um, we, uh, we're an interdisciplinary think tank at the design school. Uh, we have a philosophy of co-creation. Uh, we use whole systems thinking and uh, we really try uh, to engage with our users, with city government, with designers of different stripes and create solutions. Uh, the studio, which is an innovation unit at uh, the Dublin City Council, had heard about us um, early on when they had started this innovation unit and actually had wanted to model their activities after what we do. So uh, they met with us and we sent them some of our alumni and they carried out a project for a year or two and they became very intrigued with some of our methodologies and wanted to implement them uh, in Dublin for Dublin City Council to help the city innovate. They're in essence a change lab within the city trying to precipitate innovation and change. And uh, so they came back to us and asked us if they would work with us for a year. We have a sort of three-tiered uh, approach. We have an academic program that usually has 10 to 12 students of different disciplines working together with about 50 to 60 faculty. And then we have a research and development uh, team and a commercialization team. So they came to us and they asked us, could we help reimagine public services? Uh, they were incredibly affected by the 2008 um, economic crisis, and they were really struggling to deliver public services and to continue to meet their citizens' needs. So we had some options. Uh, what we did is we went over there, we embedded our student teams and went with our faculty, with the staff at the city, and had total access to the city staff. And we worked there for about five weeks, trying to understand, uh, shredding with them, working on different problems, actually uh, sharing our methodologies with them so that they could continue to work with us. And uh, we uh, looked at different ways of reimagining public service delivery. Um, they were under the th thrall of the austerity model that is currently uh, very big in the UK. And uh, the more we investigated this model as it rolls out on the ground, you realize that there are real flaws. That, you know, um, using greater and greater economies of scale, uh, trying to figure out how to provide standard services to the whole population really creates more and more dissatisfaction with public services. And we started to really understand by working with the citizens and the city staff that there was an incredible um, lack of communication and lack of knowledge. So city staff didn't have the knowledge to deliver the correct services to the right communities and citizens didn't even know when the city had made changes. So we decided to uh, think out of the box and create what we called a participatory model where citizens elected to be involved in different public services and build a kind of platform that cre created a new relationship between the citizen and the city, which wasn't one of a consumer of services, but one of a co-creator of services. And so that platform was really quite simple. It involved collecting and using public uh, using the public to collect valuable data from around Dublin uh, to send it to a dashboard that would help the city and the citizens understand what was going on, and then actually to engage the city's citizens to come up with solutions to the problems that they were facing in the public services. So to implement that, we came up with a three-pronged program. We called them Sense It, See It, and Make It. And the idea was to actually have citizens engaged in data missions. And one of the things we picked up on was, you know, an enthusiastic amateur has more commitment to the city than any staff. So even having just 50 to 100 enthusiastic amateurs collecting data on behalf of the city gave the city valuable knowledge that then it could use to make strategic decision. If it shared that knowledge back with its citizens via dashboard, then the citizens could start proposing solutions at a local community level. So we had to build us three simple things an app that would let the citizens work and collect the data and share it with the city, a website and dashboard that would share the knowledge and information back to the citizens, and a bus that would actually be able to go around and help the citizens uh, implement projects. Um, by doing this, we calculated that we could save, uh, just in maintenance alone, $2 million uh, a year for them. 
And how would that work? Well, right now, they get calls, they send a truck out to fix something, a broken light, pick up an unwanted piece of garbage. If the data is being sent by the citizens, they can actually receive multiple data points, create a new data route, and that, that, that route allows them to do multiple pickups on one trip. So very simple things like this could dramatically alter the services and the quality of the services through public participation. And what was key is that it was elective participation. It wasn't draconian. It wasn't big data monitoring their life. It was people sharing information willingly to improve the city. And then once they have a solution, like a cleanup day in their neighborhood, sharing that and how you do that with other people facilitated by the city bus. Um, we just finished the project. This was the exhibition. We took it to the city of Dublin. Uh, the Dublin bus that we made ended up in the daycare and is now being used by kids in Dublin. But the city itself is uh, now looking at how they might implement this. It wasn't actually a lot of money. It was around uh, 2 million euro over five years to develop something like this. And with just maintenance, you would cover that cost within a year. So the ROI was really compelling. And uh, uh, we're thinking of now taking this forward, calling it our city app, and seeing which other cities are interested in piloting something like this. The key to this is that a resilient city is really a city that's resilient because the citizens are involved and working to help solve the problems in the city. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening.